All right, guys, I thought I'd work one more problem with a vertical loop for you. All right, just because we talked about the multiple choice question in class with the bucket swing and the tension and when is the tension greatest in the vertical swing. We talked about conceptually how those ideas work, putting the different forces together. But I wanted to work one that was actually a problem for you, just so that you have one more example of uh, the forces that are coming into play here. So let's look at this one. We've got a roller coaster that's going through a loop. Now we're going to assume that the loop is perfectly circular. Now just as an interesting side point, I know we're just barely starting the problem, but just a side topic, most roller coasters don't do a perfect loop just like this. It's more of a elongated loop which is called a clothoid loop and this one actually minimizes the g-forces. It makes the accelerations less for you. Um, the circle one right here actually has higher magnitude of g-forces, which is why usually they'll, they'll do this clothoid loop. That way you're still getting the feeling of inversion and weightlessness, but the g-forces on you are actually much less. So let's go back to the problem. We're looking for the speed that the roller coaster must be traveling at the top so that the passengers will not fall out. Okay? So as the cart's going around, we're going to have a couple of force coming into play, right? At any given point, we're going to have the force of gravity, which is pulling down, and then you're going to have the normal force of the track pushing on the cart. And as it goes around, right here, you've got the force of gravity pulling down, and you're actually going to have the normal force, which is going to be pushing in like that, right? Now, when it gets to the top, you've got the force of gravity pulling down, okay? Now, if this is the absolute minimum where the passengers won't fall out, that means that the cart would just barely be on the track here. And so we're going to assume that the normal force at this point is minimal, okay, is negligible. Um, obviously, they wouldn't design it this way, but if it were going to be the absolute minimum where the passengers wouldn't fall out, then you need a normal force of zero here. Okay? So, in this case, we're going to set up our problem, which is that the sum of the forces equals the mass times acceleration. We know that in this case, the acceleration, we want it to be equal to the centripetal force. Okay, so we're going to change that to V squared over R. We've got the sum of the forces, and if we're assuming that that normal force is zero or very close to zero, then the only force we have here that is causing the centripetal force is the force of gravity, which is going to be mg. All right, so from there, we can cancel out the masses. We can multiply by R, so we have G times R equals V squared. Then we can take the square root of each side, right, which will get rid of the squared. So my velocity is going to be equal to the square root of gravity times the radius. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go second squared, so square root of gravity, which is 9.81 times the radius, which was 7.5 meters, and that gives us 8.58. So the velocity is 8.58 meters per second. And so that would be our minimum speed. And if I just scroll down here, you'll see that that is the answer, 8.6 meters per second, 8.58. So there you go. That's the problem. Good luck on your homework tonight.